Hello, hello, I'm Close, and this video is going to be an overview of how I rendered this image using Blender. So, let's begin. So the first thing I needed to do was create the island geometry. Now, there are multiple ways I could have approached this. I could have sculpted the terrain manually, I could have also tried to procedurally generate it, but the problem with both these methods is they require me to know what the hell I'm doing. So instead, I decided to download some topography data. To do this, I went to a website that could access DEM maps, aka digital elevation models. So how this website worked is I'd select an area on the map and then the website would automatically collect the relevant data and then send me an email where I could then download it. So I located an island on the map with DEM coverage and requested my data. So after downloading the files, I needed to convert my data from a DEM map into a PNG height map. To do this, I used a program called QGIS to merge the different DEM maps together and then to convert them into a PNG. After the conversion was complete, I imported the height maps into Blender. So now that my island was imported into Blender, I could take a closer look at it. And unfortunately, I didn't really like the way it looked. The island was way too flat, and I wanted more of a ring of fire aesthetic to it, with larger peaks. So to fix this, I tried adjusting the scale in the height map modifier, but eventually I realized there was a more simpler, more subtle way to solve this problem, which was to drop a mountain onto it. So now that I've destroyed the island's ecosystem under the weight of a literal mountain, it was time to create a new one. To create the island foliage, I imported Lightning Boy Studio's Ghibli tree object, and as you can see, it looks quite nice. And now, the plan was to then use Blender's particle system to instance the tree over the island, but currently the island existed as two parts, so I was going to have to merge them together. Initially, I tried to do this in Blender using the Boolean modifier, but that was a pain in the ass. So instead I exported the meshes to Mesh Mixer, and then merged them together. Once that was done, I exported the new mesh back into Blender, made some adjustments in scope mode, added a plane for the ocean, and I was done. So now that my beautiful Frankenstein of an island was complete, it was time to cover it with trees, and to render it out. So, I applied the instancing, and I was suddenly graced with a mighty 2FPS. So with Blender struggling this badly, I was concerned Blender wouldn't be able to render the scene without crashing. So to get around this, I would need to render the mountain in different parts, and then bring them back together in the compositor. But that sounded like a lot of work, so instead I crossed my fingers and hit render. And after a couple of minutes, it rendered. But on closer inspection, the foliage instance failed to cover the whole mountain, and there were little gaps here and there. But no problem I thought, I turned up the instance count, hit render, and after a couple of minutes, Blender crashed. So, yeah, um, I wasn't able to cover the whole mountain, but I really didn't want to split the render up either. So I decided to just fix it towards the end using Photoshop, and to just move on. So now that the render was working, it was time to have a look at the result. Now, looking at the rendered results, while it doesn't look terrible, it doesn't look great either. So the first thing I did was to adjust the lighting with the intention to create higher contrast and to also overexpose the detail in places that didn't really need it. Then in the compositor, I used the dilate and blur node to remove even more unnecessary detail. Finally, I used a displacement node with some noise to break up the edges and to try simulate a more leaf-like appearance. And with those changes done, this is the before and after. And personally, I think it looks a lot better. So now that we've got trees on the island, it was time to do the water and sky. To do the water, I used the ocean shader from Kristoff, which involved me adding a plane, slapping an ocean shader on it, and then making a few adjustments to the colors and switching the mix type to color dodge. To do the sky, I added a plane of a gradient. I then duplicated said plane and added a cloud texture to it. I then used the texture as a factor to mix between an emission and transparent shader. This gave me a nice sky with some distant clouds. Now, to create the, um... Cumulonimbus. With that, I imported Lightning Boy Studios Ghibli Cloud. I then duplicated, scaled, and changed some of the colors to get the results I wanted. After I was happy with what I had, I rendered out each cloud and imported the renders as an image plane, since it just made it a lot easier to manage the scene. So with those clouds done, I imported Kristoff's cloud shader and scattered them around the image similar to my reference image. And lastly, I added one last cloud of layers to my sky texture. And then with that, my sky was finally done. Now if you're wondering why I used so many different types of clouds to get the ones I wanted, it's because, well, there are a lot of different types of clouds. And trying to get the texture and shape that I want 
requires different approaches. So that's why I use a bunch of different techniques and shaders here. If you want more information on different types of clouds, I recommend checking out this blog page by this guy. It has a lot of good info there. So the last thing to do was to paint some sand, do a little bit of color correction, and then to add some sun rays. To add the sun rays was pretty simple. I just used a ellipse mask and then put that through a sun ray node, which resulted in, well, a sun ray. And then once I had a few of those that I spread out across the image, I just mixed it in with the rendered image using color dodge because I always use color dodge because it just looks really nice. And yeah, with that, we're finally done. So reflection time. Now this project doesn't look that great, um, but I haven't done a background in years and it was mainly a recap project. And now that my memory has been refreshed, I've got a lot of new ideas that I want to try and that I look forward to testing out. And hopefully people that are watching this that are new to stylized rendering now have a bunch of new resources to research and play with. Now I won't be doing a time lapse of this video like I normally do because it would pr be pretty terrible to watch since I didn't show it as much but that little part of the overview where Blender was moving at like two frames a second that was like a good like two hours of the actual like process. So having a time lapse video wouldn't really be a time lapse it would just be like real time except only like a frame a second so yeah it would just look terrible and that was like a huge portion of the video so i don't really want to make that but you know next video is going to be a character because they like doing a character next so that's all for now to next time